today we're visiting some of the more remote parts of New Mexico, mainly Valley of Fires and the Very Large Array. Then on to Arizona, on a quest for Pelicamp West. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Well, good morning. Yeah, we've been blessed with great weather up until, t I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm, I am complaining, but I'm not complaining. I mean, it's cloudy, could be a lot worse. But the main reason we came to this uh, state park is because it is a dark sky area, you know, and the, and the McDonald Observatory, which a lot of you have recommended, is like very close. But anyway, it wasn't a good dark sky night because it was cloudy. And then the observatory, apparently the main thing are the, are the star watch parties at night. And there wasn't one this week so or this day. So we're gonna keep on going to Valley of Fires. Uh, we might take a little bit of a scenic route. Let me see. I don't know exactly which route we're gonna take it. We might just go up to I-10 and uh, El Paso. The road to El Paso. Who would have thought Texas would be so mountainous? There it is, the McDonald Observatory. Today, by the way, it'll be equally about the journey as it is about the destination. We are still a very long way from New Mexico. Picnic area with a view. Let's stop real quick. And the sun's coming out. Kind of. Sort of. All right, let's continue. We've finally made it to the interstate, and here at the Kent Ghost Town, we're going to take I-10 West towards Van Horn, and eventually the outskirts of El Paso. Yeah, this place has definitely seen better days. At some point, we're going to cross into the mountain time zone, thus gaining an hour. An extra hour is always welcome, driving to the west. This stretch of interstate always brings back good memories of my first road trip to the West. Because only on a trip like this you get to notice the gradual changing scenery until you realize unequivocally you are approaching the American West. Besides the arid scenery, these super long cargo trains are also an ever present staple in these parts. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset. At some point, someone recommended this place because it was pinned on my map. So here we are, Delfina's Kitchen in Sierra Blanca. It is early, so the place is almost empty. And I like the no frills decoration. We're having something called the Super Mexican Dinner, which has a little bit of everything. Really good. While we were eating, the sun came out and it is now a beautiful day on I-10. As we get closer to the border, once again, we can even see the wall in the distance. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. There is an incredible amount of trash on the side of the road, and I wonder why. 
do they not pick it up? And it goes on for miles. Could it be because of the wind? I don't know, but it feels so dystopian. The edge of Texas. Yeah, this is pretty much the state line. Welcome to New Mexico. Yes, we've made it to the land of enchantment. Driving through New Mexico, Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix. Driving to the west in my RV is where I wanna be. We've been actually driving north, but eventually we'll start driving west here. Let's stop and resupply because we're going pretty remote after this. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset. So here's the plan, we're going to drive up to Carrizozo, spend the night at the Valley of Fires and then continue west towards San Antonio, Socorro and eventually the VLA, which is a famous astronomical radio telescope. Then on to Arizona. Here we are, arriving in Carrizozo. We are almost at today's destination. We are arriving at the lava field, and I was able to get this site once again by using CampNav. Look for a link in the description. It works really well finding cancellations, so you can book these hard-to-get sites. It's a little windy today, but we have made it to the Valley of Fires and this place is awesome. I had no idea. If I, if, if I knew this campsite was going to be so good, I probably would have stayed an extra night. But um, it's all I could get. I mean, tomorrow is Friday, so it's everything is probably fully booked. But um, yeah, this is our site. We have views of snow-capped mountains on, over there and now we're going to do it's a short natural tra trail that takes you on the lava field. And that's what we're gonna do. There's a brochure at the bookstore, but I believe the visitor center is closed already. Here's a sample of the volcanic rocks we're about to see. There's Minitini 4. Here we have one of several pretty weathered interpretive signs. Apparently, the lava came from there, Little Black Peak. Not an actual volcano, but a lava tube. We're gonna have to go back all those switchbacks on the way back. Luckily, it's not that steep. <laughs> Apparently, this is one of the youngest lava flows in the continental United States. It erupted about 5,000 years ago. Which, by the way, the temperature is dropping here quite rapidly. It's getting really chilly, so we're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible and then go back to the camper and hopefully we won't run out of propane because we gotta be like like really low. <laughs> yeah, more lava rocks here. By the way, very accessible trail here. It is amazing to see 
how the lava solidified into these interesting textures. a good looking juniper, very interesting trees. And these other ones are called spoon plant. There's once again Minitini 4. What a great location this is. So far, a very rewarding uh, little hike here. I don't think uh, there will be a need to spend a second day here unless I mean, we might be able to, if it clears up. This might be a pretty good dark sky uh, location. I know the town of Carrizozo is relatively close, but yeah. Oh, the juxtaposition, wait till you see it. We can see Minitini and the mountain behind it. Well, that was a great little loop trail. Very cool, very cool rock formations. And uh, I think that's all we're gonna do here today. I go inside, turn on the heater, and tomorrow we continue west. I want to take a moment to thank our longtime sponsor, Surfshark VPN. And VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And that's exactly what it does. It creates a private, secure connection between your devices and the internet. And that is an essential tool for us travelers, because at some point we're going to have to connect to that potentially insecure Wi-Fi. And you never know, a bad actor could be eavesdropping on that connection, potentially logging your keystrokes, stealing your password, your identity, giving you malware. That would be a very bad day, especially on the road, right? And, it, and it's only, that's only its main feature. It's got many other features. My favorite, you can virtually transport yourself pretty much anywhere around the world. Uh, you just click wherever you want to go. And this is especially uh, useful if you need to access content that is blocked at your current location, but you know it's available somewhere else. Yes click to wherever you want to go around the world. And as far as the internet is concerned, you are in that location. It's also got a clean web feature that will get rid of unwanted ads, potential malware. It's got a true incognito search for your eyes only. And I have a very special deal for you guys. If you go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you enter promo code myrv at checkout, you will get 86% off and up to three months for free. Well, good morning from New Mexico. What a great discovery this place was. I'm sure we'll return someday and stay longer. But now, the road beckons. Well, this place was awesome, might return someday. And uh, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, this part of the trip is, uh, we're hitting spots that I've missed in previous trips. And our next uh, point of interest is no exception. We're going to the very large array. So far, it's been a great scenic drive. Let's take a quick break here at Socorro to refuel. What can I say? Gas station with a view.
can see it. The VLA, the very large array, our coveted destination, located in this remote valley, surrounded by mountains, away from all radio interference. In fact, when we arrive, we have to put all our devices on airplane mode. I wonder if Starship has an airplane mode, too. Anyway, this is a Y-shaped array consisting of 28 25-meter radio telescopes. And they are all on railroad tracks, so they can be moved as needed. It is so cool to finally be here. This installation has been here since the mid-70s, although the electronics have been updated recently. Since they are so strict about electronic devices, I'm just going to use my phone on airplane mode. There's a self-guided tour that we're going to do, and it is snowing a little, actually. They have several interpretive signs, this one about their solar telescope. Too bad we don't have any sun today. Here's the Bracewell radio sundial, named after Australian native and radio astronomer Ron Bracewell. The concrete piers were once part of Bracewell's radio telescope at Stanford University. The signatures on the concrete belong to many prominent visitors of the aforementioned Stanford radio telescope. And they were brought here in 2012. Besides its obvious scientific importance, the VLA has appeared in several science fiction movies, 2010, the year we made contact, and more importantly, contact with Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey, Tom Skerritt. Good movie. Yeah, they are pretty massive. Here's a sculpture called Shiva Shuwana. There goes the Google Street View car. Maybe we'll be in a picture soon. There's a rest stop with a view coming up soon. Check it out. It got slit. Here's one final look at the VLA. We might never come back to this one, but I'm glad we did at least once. Oh, there's a historical marker too. Well, another one checked off the bucket list for sure. I mean, the VLA has been on the on the list for many, many years, and it is so remote and so out of the way. I mean, you have to really want to come here. And, and we're getting some some bonus sleet or flurries or whatever this is called. It's like tiny little uh, hail. L let me know, you, you guys were familiar with this kind of precipitation. And um, one, one now we're going to uh, a, a town called uh, Pie Town. We might have some pie because we haven't had breakfast. This is cool. By the way, it looks kind of abandoned. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on there. Gift shop is closed. I mean, we could have just wandered in without paying the $6 per person and nobody would have noticed. <laughs> no, don't do it, don't do it. Next up, Pie Town.
just going over the continental divide at 7,796 feet of elevation. And the snow is getting worse. We're getting all kinds of weather here in New Mexico. Well, what to do in Pie Town? Well, get a pie. There were several places to choose from, but this one seemed a good combination of quality and convenience. They're on Pie Town time, which means very slow, but let's hope the pies are good. Got a quiche and a chocolate mousse. I'll let you know how they are. The pie, by the way, was very good. So was the quiche. But the coolest part was able to say you got a pie at Pie Town. Now on to Arizona, where our main goal on this trip is the quest for Pelican West. To finally own a piece of land in Arizona. And we have three areas we're going to look at. Sholo and Snowflake are one of those. Valley at the Grand Canyon Junction is another one. And Golden Valley near Kingman. Also, since we're so close, we're going to visit Petrified Forest and maybe even the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. Then, up to Las Vegas, baby! Actually, it is starting to look like Arizona. Well, what do you know? There's our welcome sign. We're arriving in Holbrook, and we're going to make this town our home base for the next couple of days, in order to be able to explore the area. This also happens to be a Route 66 town, so it might be fun to see what remains. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road.
Friday. 